Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. We're going to check in on all aspects of the secondary market. There's a lot to see again this week. Some of the main influencers when it comes to price changes include things like Modern Horizons coming out not too long ago, of course, that 2020 previews, which were still going on this week, and the changes coming to the Pauper format. So before we jump in, just a quick reminder. If you're looking to pick up any Corset 2020 singles or booster box, they do have them at FlipSideGaming.com, and you can use that Heroes promo code. Hopefully save yourself a little cash while you support the channel. That's always appreciated, but without any further ado, let's get into it. We're going to begin with the top five standard legal cards that have lost value this week, but I do have two honorable mentions. The first one is Nicol Bolas Dragon God, down 99 cents to 16.90. So this card continues to lose value. We're entering that in-between time where everything's going to change now in the standard meta, so people aren't going to spend a lot of money on the higher price cards until they know exactly what's going to happen, what they're going to play in the coming weeks. So some of the more expensive cards are going to cool off generally, but this one has been especially soft because last season it was in Grix's control, and it was great there, but that was the only place you really found the card. Without it showing up in more places, it's really hard for it to maintain a price point, even at $16, $17. This will lose more value. The second one is Karn the Great Creator down $1.02 to $12.50. Now this one's kind of interesting. This is a rare, not a mythic, so there are more copies out there. But this is seeing far more play when you compare it to the previous card. Modern, you're going to find this in Colorless Aldrazi. Tron, Mono Red Prison, Bant Devoted Karn. Legacy, Karn Bomberman, Mono Red Prison, Aldrazi Post. Vintage, Karn Shops, Aldrazi. This sees a lot of commander play. This card feels like it's omnipresent, right? So why is it losing value? It just had so much hype and excitement around it for so long, and during that whole time, people were opening packs. This rare was getting out there in circulation more and more, so I think you're seeing a down week here. It might stabilize down a little bit more in the short term, but I think long term, this will be a big card, which will have a hefty price tag somewhere down the line in the future. Number five is Stopping Ground. This is the original one, though, from Guild Pack, down $1.08 to nineteen ninety eight. So just generally, this card has been a little softer because of modern more so than standard. In standard, it sees plenty of play in like Grill Midrange and some other decks there. But currently, some of the decks in modern that do use this card are starting to see a little bit less play, and that's because of some of the changes happening right now with Modern Horizons. For example, Dredge, Jond, and a few more are not quite as plentiful in the field as they were just a few weeks ago. As things sort of work themselves out, this card goes down a little bit. Number four, Vivian Reed, down $1.15 to eleven seventy eight. This card saw less play this past season compared to the last couple seasons. So that definitely is part of the reason it's losing value. It's still out there, but it's usually in a sideboard role now. You will find this in Gruel Midrange decks, John Warriors, Selesnia Tokens. It hasn't dried up or anything. But compared to the days that this was in all the midrange decks, a lot has changed for this card, and I do think it's going to lose more value as we move closer to rotation, because that's the other thing you have to remember with some of the cards today. This one in particular, this ball, that's it for standard, and it hasn't really done a whole lot outside of standard. Number three is Liliana Dreadhorde General, down $1.23 to nineteen thirty six. So this one, I think, leans more on the side that this is an expensive card and people don't want to buy into it when they're in between metas, because this card has seen a lot of play in the past meta. Esper Tempo, Saltai Midrange, Grixis Control, and more run this. And of course, this is not going anywhere this fall. This is sticking around. Number two, Crucible of Worlds, fifth dawn down $1.94 to $35.95, tenth edition down $205 to $30.50. So this card got super hot recently. It was spiking aggressively. Last couple of weeks we've been seeing normalization, and that's not unexpected. The card still sees a lot of play. Typically, though, it's a one or two of between the main and the sideboard of a lot of different decks, but it's not something you typically see like four of in a deck. Now, Karn the Great Crater was the initial catalyst for the spiking. That card really pushed this one because a lot of the decks that run Karn also will run a copy of Crucible of Worlds, typically. The type of decks we're talking about here are things like in Modern, Tron Builds, Amulet Titan, Four Color Prison, Mono Red Prison, Legacy Karn Prison, Vintage Karn Shops, and more. However, another reason this card got hot was because Modern Horizons brought a lot of cards that did interact well with lands, so there was some speculation, maybe Crucible gets better. We'll have to continue to watch the metas to see how much of an impact those cards have on this one. Also, 
There are some new cards coming even from Corset 2020 that could revive this a little bit. One of which is Cryptic Caves, but remember, Crucible is still legal and standard for a few more months. It will rotate out this fall, though. Number one, Nico Bolas, the Ravager, down 221 to 2750 this week. So, a couple things to note about this card. This is rotating out this fall, so yes, it is softening up. Secondly, much like Nico Bolas, Dragon God, this hasn't seen a whole lot of play outside of Grixis Control. Not to say it couldn't see quality play this next season in Standard before it leaves, but it also hasn't done a whole lot outside of Standard. All right, let's move on to the top five Standard legal cards that have gained value this week. Again, we have two honorable mentions. The first one is Blood Crypt from Ravnica Allegiance. This goes up 88 cents to 11.92. This sees play in Grixis Control, but I think the reason this is climbing more so is because of what's happening right now in Modern. Hogak Bridgevine decks are becoming very popular right now, and they do typically run sometimes up to four copies of Blood Crypt. You'll also find this in Dredge, Jund, and more in that format. The second one is Finale of Devastation, up a dollar to nine seventy-five. This has been great in Modern so far. You'll find this in Devoted Druid builds, Amulet Titan, and more. And aside from that, there are some cards from Corset 2020 that are coming out that could push this card even further. Those are cards like Villas Broker of Blood and Leyline of Abundance. Think about this for standard. Maybe the easiest way to get Villas on the battlefield is to ramp into a Finale of Devastation and just go find the card. With Leyline of Abundance, you have a card that's going to push your mana a little bit faster, which will make Finale of Devastation that much better. Also, when you think about modern, Leyline of Abundance into a Birds of Paradise with a Freed from the Real on it, that will create endless mana, which maybe one of your options is to use something like Finale of Devastation there. So ultimately, I think this is a good card that potentially could get better next season. Number five is Steam Vents. This is the one from Guild Pact, up a dollar of seven to twenty four thirty six. Of course, as a Phoenix Dex continue to do well in standard, I don't think that's going to change next season. In modern, you'll find this in Is a Phoenix there as well, and Storm and other builds. Number four is Dreadhorde Arcanist, up a dollar thirty nine to six sixty two. Okay. This is one of those newer cards from War of the Spark that has really had a big impact. Maybe not as much in Standard like it's in Boros Feather and it's good there, but in Modern, Mardu Pyromancer, Teamer Wizards, Legacy Delver builds are running this, and other decks too. Number three, Finale of Promise, up $1.46 to $10. Another card you'll find in Is It Phoenix and Standard. Modern, Is It Phoenix, Mono Red Phoenix, Burn. This card is starting to show up in a few places. Number two is Watery Grave. This is the one from Ravnica City of Guilds. It goes up $1.80 to $24.99. When it comes to the Shocklands in Standard this past season, this was one of the most important ones. It's in Esper Tempo, Saltai Midrange, Grixis Control. But much like the other Shocks, this is also in a lot of modern builds, where Prison is a popular one, as well as Death Shadow, both Esper and Grixis, plus many others. Number one is Polyraptor, up $2.11 to $7.49. Second week in a row that this card has been on top of our list, and it is because of a card from Corset 2020. That card is Marauding Raptor, so if this is on the battlefield and I play Polyraptor, it's going to do damage to the Polyraptor, creating a token. Token comes into play, does damage to the token, creating another one, so on and so forth. Here's the trick, though. If you can't break the cycle, the game's a draw. So you do have to find a way to maybe destroy this creature or in some way break the cycle. Now, if you can do that, you can even use Rhythm of the Wild to give all your creatures haste. And if that's the case, yeah, it's basically like Splinter Twin. Not as easy to set up, of course. We'll have to see if it's consistent enough. But there are players trying to work this out now for standard. Okay, let's move on to modern with the top five modern legal cards that have lost value this week. But again, we have two honorable mentions. The first is doubling season from Ravnica City of Guilds. It goes down three twelve to fifty nine ninety nine. Not really a big modern card, but it is a huge commander card. This card got super hot during the pre-release and preview period for War of the Spark because a lot of people thought that this is going to be amazing with all these new Planeswalkers. And it is, and the card spiked, but now you're just seeing a little retraction as people are starting to move on to other things. The second one is Vegvine from Rise of the Eldrazi, down 340 to 3346. So you might say to yourself, wait a minute, isn't this part of that Hogak deck? How could this be going down $3.40 this week? Well, yes, it had a huge spike last week. And because of that, even though there's still a lot of people that want these cards to build Hogak, there are a lot of other players that said, you know, I have a lot of these in my collection and I don't need them or use them. Since the card spiked, I'm going to go ahead and try to sell them or trade them away. The extra copies enter the marketplace and you see this retraction this week. This is not unusual or unexpected, 
Basically, from this point, though, I think the value of the card is going to be strictly tied into how well the deck does this weekend and weekends to come. So if it has a great weekend, expect this card to spike again next week. If it doesn't, they could lose more value. Number five is Karn Liberated from New Phyrexia, down $4.24 to $70.25. So a couple of things with Karn. First off, it did get reprinted in Ultimate Masters. Because of that, yes, this card has been a little softer recently. Secondly, Karn the Great Crater has kind of pushed into its territory a little bit. So, this is still a huge card in Tron, and because of that, it's always going to maintain a pretty big price tag. But it does go down a little this week, and I wouldn't be shocked to see it go down some more in coming weeks. Number four is Ensnaring Bridge. Stronghold down 366 to 5599 Seventh edition down 446 to $60. Kind of a similar story here. This is retraction because of some really aggressive spiking recently. You're going to find this in a lot of decks that play Karn the Great Crater again. Things like Colorless Eldrazi, War Prison, Mono Red Prison and Modern, Legacy, Karn Bomberman, Mono Red Prison, Eldrazi, Post, Vintage, you'll find this in Karn Shops. Another card that is showing up everywhere right now. Number three is Tarmogoyf. This is the one from Future Sight, down 486 to 7493. Still a popular card, but Jund, The Rock, those are seeing a little less play right now as people are trying new things in Modern because of the new cards from Modern Horizons. However, there are some new cards that could promote this one if the decks do well. There's a Teamer Snow deck, for example, that looks like it could do pretty well, and that's running Tarmogoyfs. You're also going to find this in Naya Zoo, which is getting revived a little bit because of some of the cards from Modern Horizons. This is one to keep an eye on. Now, part of the reason this has lost as much value as it did is because this is the original one. It is the one that is harder to find. It's got the unique look to it, so it always maintains a higher price point. And as the other Goyfs have gone down, especially since the reprinting in Ultimate Masters, this one has such a big price tag that I think this was maybe overdue for some normalization. But again, we'll have to see what happens with this card this weekend and weekends to come. Number two is Teferi's Puzzle Box. Three copies here that are moving down the most, and that's Visions down $280 to $25. Ninth edition down $280 to $28.99. Eighth edition down $488 to $22. So this continues to drop. No big surprise here. This got really hot for a short period of time because people were thinking about putting this in Narset Thopter Sword decks in Modern. However, that deck is hanging around, but hasn't put up a big result yet anyway. This is also showing up in some Esper Control decks too, so that's another thing to at least keep an eye on. But I think ultimately, unless one of these decks can put up like a huge result really quickly, these are going to drop down quite a bit more. Number one is Altar of Dementia. This is the one from Tempest. This goes down $701 to $19. So this card, of course, got reprinted in Modern Horizons, making it modern legal. So on one hand, you got more copies out there. On the other hand, you got more people wanting those copies. This original copy spiked pretty aggressively when people saw it was going to be in the set, and they felt that they wanted to get copies for potential modern decks. Got even hotter because of Hogak, because you're going to find this in the Hogak Bridgevine deck. And now everything's calming down a little bit. Again, you're getting retraction because you had some huge spikes this past week. If Hogak does great this weekend, though, this could recover very, very quick. If it doesn't do so great, it could lose more value. But regardless, this has always been a very solid commander card and will hold some value, especially the original version. The market has calmed down a little bit, but it's still pretty crazy. So yet again, we're going to look at 10 cards here. The top 10 modern legal cards that have gained value this week. Coming in at number 10, Rings of Bright Hearth of 303 to 5849. Of course, this being from Lorwyn. In that time period of Magic, the print runs were a little bit lower. These cards do tend to get a little spiky. I won't say that again in this video, but we do have more cards from this time period. You're going to see them later. Now, this has always been an incredible Commander card that people are going to pick up regardless, but it got even hotter recently because of Urza. You'll play this in Urza decks with Basalt Monolith and try to create some endless mana. Urza's all about that. Number nine is Aria of Flame. This goes up 326 to 676, and this is starting to see play at least out of sideboards in Modern. I've seen it in Is It Phoenix, Is It Blitz, and Storm. Number eight is the Exilid Jailer. It goes up 331 to 495 this week, and you can probably guess why. Cards and graveyards lose all ability, so this is a card people want to sideboard in against things like Hogak Bridgevine, just regular Dredge, Phoenix even, so it is gaining momentum in the Modern format. This sees a little vintage play too. Also, this did get a mention in the Star City Games Versus episode this week when they were talking about ways to sideboard against some of these strategies. Number seven, Sliver Hive Lord up 395 to 4176. With Modern Horizons bringing us the first sliver and some new slivers, this card remains hot, not just for casual players either. 
Sure, you could play some kitchen table slivers, put together a commander deck, what have you, but there are people also trying to build a modern sliver deck right now. As a matter of fact, this past week on MTG Goldfish, Saffron Olive did put together a deck tech that did bring some attention to cards like this. Number six is Season Pyromancer up 440 to 1799. You're seeing a lot of Modern Horizons cards on these lists today, and you're going to see more in a second. What really is the catalyst here? It's just that they're seeing a lot of play, and because everything has moved so quickly, we went from War of the Spark to Modern Horizons right into previous record set 2020. You have a situation where people are just going to run out of money. So sure, Modern Horizons is a quote-unquote print-to-demand set, which doesn't necessarily mean everyone's going to get what they want anyway when it comes to allocation and all. But history has shown us when a lot of sets are pushed together like this, especially the set in the middle, it really suffers. A year, two years, three years down the road, there just might not be a lot of copies of these cards out there for the people that want them. So anything that's successful, you want to keep a close eye on. So an example of that would be this card. This is seeing play in Jund already, Mardu Pyromancer, and more. Number five, Tezzeret the Seeker. Two copies here. Shards of Alora goes up 119 to 2020. Modern Masters 2015 goes up 468 to 2449. This is a great commander card. It got hotter recently, though, because of Urza. Number four, Sword of Fire and Ice for Modern Masters goes up 468 to 6968. This is in Legacy, Death and Taxes, Bantley of Old, and more. Also, a lot of commander players will throw this in a deck. Very popular commander card. And I do think the new swords from Modern Horizons have people thinking about these older swords now, too. Number three, is Sigarda is eight. It goes up 553 to 713. Now, this card is spiking because of, of course, that 2020 preview card. And that card is Colossus Hammer. So basically, the idea here is you could do something like play a Glistener Elf or play a Core Duelist. Play this with Sigarda's Aid, and you could potentially win a modern game really, really quickly. We'll again have to see how consistent the build is, but feels like it could be pretty good. Number two is Renin 6, up 1187 to 5310. So this is one of the mythics from Modern Horizons, seeing a very big spike this week. And again, it's just because of gameplay. Look at modern deck lists right now. This is showing up in places like Jund. But maybe more importantly, Legacy loves this card. Jund decks there to play it. Teamer Delver will play it. Lands, Four Color Loam, and more. This is even seen a little vintage play. Number one is Zinc Moth Nexus of 1231 to 37.59. So in modern, this sees a lot of play. Affinity, Hardened Scales Affinity, in fact. But part of the reason it's spiking as aggressively as it is right now isn't as much modern as it is Commander. A lot of players want this for their Yawgmoth Thran Physician builds. That card is making a number of cards move up. We're going to talk more about that later. Okay, onto the Vintage Spotlight. This is where we talk about cards that are good for Legacy, Vintage, 93, 94, or just cards that are important to collectors. We have a revised Dual Land on the list today. The only one that made our list, although they're all still creeping up. This is Tropical Island. It is on the reserve list. It goes up 979 to 34104. Royal Assassin from Unlimited. A lot of Unlimited cards just remain hot. This is the second week in a row this has been on our list. This goes up 1102 to 79.99. Another Unlimited card here, Wrath of God, going up 1156 to 89.95. Taiga from Unlimited goes up $30 in a cent to 310. Of course, this is on the reserve list, but it was reprinted and revised. And we have Gauntlet of Might, another card from Unlimited on the reserve list. This goes up 75.24 to 774.99 this week. All right, time for the Commander Spotlight. A lot of cards to talk about again, so I'm going to go kind of fast here. I'm not going to talk about every reason why a card could be moving, but I'll try to hit you with the highlights. Vidalkin, Archmage, up $1.08 to nine ninety five, going up because of Urza in Commander. Changeling Titan, up $1.10 to one ninety four. Okay, it's a Lorewind card. I won't say it again, though. But yes, this is going up because of the Bear Commander decks. And here's another one, Bear Cub, going up $1.12 to seven ninety nine. Path to Exile. This is the one from the Modern Event deck. It goes up $1.14 to eleven twenty four. Now, the thing with Path is it's a modern staple. It even sees some legacy play. So it's probably not moving so much because of Commander. But it is a big Commander card, so I thought I'd include it here. Also, this is the Modern Event deck copy. So this could just be a weird anomaly online this week. I wouldn't read too much into it. But sometimes these copies that are harder to find when they start to move, once in a while they are an indication that all the other cards might be moving too. So it's always worth watching these. 
Blood Gas from Iconic Masters goes up $1.16 to twenty one fifteen. So this is in Yawgmoth decks. A lot of people are trying to pick them up for that in Commander. But probably it's moving more so because of Modern. This is in Hogak Bridgevine. Very popular right now, as you know. Also, the regular Dredge deck will run this, as well as Hollow One. Vintage even has a Hogak Dredge deck out there that seems to be performing pretty well so far. That deck also runs this. Linvala, Keeper of Silence, up $1.20 to $21. This is the one for Modern Masters 2017. One thing I've noticed, this is the only real big mover this week, but a lot of angels and demons are starting to creep up, and that is because of Kalia Zenith Seeker. A lot of people are trying to build new commander decks now with this new Kalia and the old Kalia, so I would expect to see more demons, dragons, and angels increasing in value over the next week or two. Next we have Sword of Light and Shadow. This is the one from Modern Masters. It goes up $1.20 to $34.99. And this is a card that sees a little legacy play. Sometimes it's in the Bantley of Old Deck, for example. But again, another really popular card for Commander. And I do think, like I said earlier, the new swords just have people looking at some of the old swords too. Sliver Legion, another card that you'll find in even the modern builds of Slivers. This goes up $1.20 to $120. But again, very popular right now for Commander. Cavern of Souls, this is the one from Ultimate Masters, going up $1.23 to $75. Speaking of sliver decks, here's a card that works there. This newer copy is getting a little bit closer to the other copies. Of course, it's a wildly popular card. You're going to find this in Modern Humans, Colorless Eldrazi, so many more decks in Modern 2, as well as Legacy and Vintage. And this is a big commander card. Basically, if you're playing Tribal, you're going to be interested in this card. There is a possibility of maybe at least a new commander build around Elementals. Cards like Creeping Trailblazer and many others from Magic 2020 have people at least thinking about that. Elish Nor and Grand Cenobite goes up $1.25 to $21.92. This is the one from Iconic Masters. Has a little bit of a jump this week. This card will always kind of move here or there, just kind of out of nowhere, because it's a solid commander card. Even sees a little bit of legacy play sometimes in Reanimator. Pale Bear is, of course, Pale Bear is still going up $1.40 to $10.99 for your Bear Commander decks. Angus McKenzie, great pillow four card, but this is a reserve list card from Legends. This one goes up $1.42 this week to $185. Sylvan Library from Legends up $1.44 to $122.50. Legacy staple, but a great commander card as well. Now, sure, this one might be moving because it's a Legends card, getting harder and harder to find in good condition, but it is a card you should pay attention to. I do think a year, two years down the road, this could be touching easily $150, maybe more. Jet Medallion, Commander 2014, goes up $1.07 to $11.23. Tempest up $1.45 to $12.41. This is the latest medallion to start jumping, and Yogmoth is part of the reason. Also, Bolas is Citadel. You do have a lot of people playing that in Commander nowadays, too. Aside from that, though, we do have some new cards coming from Magic 2020, which will play well with this. Cards like the aforementioned Villas Broker of Blood and Dread Presence. Vidalcan Ori, up $1.45 to $27.24. This is the one from Conspiracy. This got a mention on the Command Zone podcast yet again this week, and it was in relation to a Magic 2020 card. That card is Scheming Symmetry. If you play this as though it had Flash, you have first crack at drawing the card that you tutored for, and you might be able to disrupt what your opponent put on top of their deck. Another card that could be going up just because it's harder and harder to find in good condition, it's Concordant Crossroads from Legends, up $1.61 to 118 but it is also an amazing Commander card. War to Bones from Eventide, back on our list today. So another card from that time period. It goes up $1.62 to $14.24. This started getting hot with Karn the Great Creator and Commander, and it has kind of a bounce back week after it calmed down a little bit. Muraganda Petroglyphs. This goes up $1.63 to four thirty, and that is because of the Bear Commander decks. It fits perfectly there. Ragnar is another one of the Legends Reserve List Gold cards. It goes up $1.70 to $29.87. Pure Steel Paladin goes up $1.83 to $10.42. This is in Modern Sram O's decks, but this is also another card that is moving up because of Colossus Hammer, which we saw earlier. Scythrix the Blight Dragon goes up $1.88 to $33, another card people are playing with Yawgmoth. Monastery Mentor, this goes up $243 to $23.51. So this sees a lot of Modern Legacy and Vintage play. That's probably a lot of the reason it's going up. But there is a card from Corset 2020 that has me more interested in this card when it comes to Commander. That card is Kaikara Wind's Fury. Here it is, of course, Yogmoth, Thran Physician, had to be here, right? 
A lot of people playing this in Commander right now it goes up 248 to 1899, but it's also seeing play in Modern Mardu Pyromancer as well as some other decks. Cursed Totem, this goes up 249 to 964. This is the one from 6th edition. Has a little bit of a spike this week. Part of the reason for that is this is a great card in those Teferi Temporal Archmage decks, not only in Commander, but also in Oathbreaker. Aside from that, though, this is also an answer to some of these powerful creatures that have been showing up recently. Force of Negation up 255 to 3317. You're going to find this in Modern Is It Phoenix, Azori's Control, among other decks there. Already starting to see a little Legacy and Vintage play too, but on top of that, it is showing up in Commander as well. A lot of people are picking this up for Urza builds, but really it could be good in any deck where you're playing some blue and you want to be a little more controlling. Exploration from Urza Saga goes up 258 to 3819. Now, of course, this is good in Legacy Lands, we know that already, but there are a few cards from Corset 2020 that might make this card more appealing, especially in Commander. These are cards like Omnith Locus of the Royal and Field of the Dead. Winter Orb remains hot. This is in a lot of Urza builds. Fourth edition up $1.17 to $7.99. Unlimited up $2.84 to $80.75. Static Orb, another card you'll find in Urza builds. This is the one from Tempest that goes up $3.81 to $26.99. Haze Zan Tamar goes up $4 to $180.97. This is another one of those reserve list Gold Legends cards. Gilded Drake. Now this is on the reserve list and a lot of people have been putting this in their Urza build so it has been hot for a few weeks now. It goes up 451 to 6850. It also did get a mention on the Command Zone podcast this week in relationship to a Corset 2020 preview card and that was Agent of Treachery. A Fieldmancer goes up 892 to 2195. This card remains hot and it is seeing play in Yawgmoth builds. Gaia's Cradle, this is on the reserve list, going up 1359 to 372.07. Now, even though this is on the reserve list, it does have a Judge promo version and foil that was created back before they closed that loophole on the list. Now, with that being said, is a commander really driving this? No, probably not. I mean, it's an excellent commander card. It even got a command zone mention this week. But in Legacy, this has been a card you see a lot of times in Elves. More recently, the Bant Leovold deck has really gotten hot. That deck also runs this card. Okay, let's go on to our Popper Spotlight, and a lot to talk about this week when it comes to Popper. Wizards announced a couple days ago that they are making some big changes to the format. Starting July 2nd, they are unifying Magic Online and Paper finally. And what that means is, if a card is in common on Magic Online, then it's Popper legal. That's always how it has been. However, if a card is in Paper now going forward as a common, it will also be Popper legal. No more confusion about what's legal here or there. Basically, Popper is a Magic Online format. So when you play in paper, we've always just used the rules for Magic Online, but not anymore. Everything's going to be combined and it's going to make a lot more sense. But a side product of that is you're getting more than 400 new cards that will now be legal in Popper. That's kind of awesome. Now, they automatically banned three of these new cards because they realized that they could be problematic right off the bat. Those are Hymn to Torak, Sinkhole, and High Tide. Very powerful commons. Now, a lot of other cards, though, are going up in value this week because either they're hard to find to begin with and are drying up quickly, or they just have the potential to be some of the better cards in the format in the future. So we're going to see some of those today. Also, we're going to see some cards that already exist in Popper that are going up. Caustic Caterpillar, this is one of those cards that was already around, up 10 cents to 62 cents. You'll find this sometimes out of sideboards for decks like Elves. Guardian of the Guild Pact, another popular card that's been around, up 18 cents to 94 cents. You'll find this in Orzhov Pestilence, among other places. Okay, here's one of those cards that will be new on July 2nd. Merchant Scroll, 8th edition, goes up 20 cents to 317. Homelands, yep, there's a Homelands card on the market watch. The world must be coming to an end. It goes up 34 cents to 328. So yeah, this is a great tutor. As a matter of fact, this sees vintage play. This is a great commander card. You'll find this in Urza decks many times. It's going to be a great popper card too. Lotus Petal goes up 39 cents to $9 from Tempest. It was a common there. And yeah, this is a card that sees play in Legacy, Vintage, Commander. Again, Urza decks like this too. Another great popper card. Hormod's Crypt Chronicles goes up 11 cents to 98 cents. Yep, not only is Homelands on here, but Chronicles made it too. This is truly the end days. The Dark goes up 50 cents to 951. 
Now another powerful card in multiple formats. This is a great sideboard card to deal with those graveyard shenanigans that have been popular. You will find this in modern, legacy, vintage sideboards. Another card that's good in Urza decks, although zero casting cost artifacts are awesome because if Urza's out, basically it's a mock sapphire. And in the future, this could be a great card for sideboards in Popper 2. Gaia's Touch. This is a card a lot of people forgot about, but I used to play with this back in the day. This goes up 66 cents to 197. Now that it's going to become a part of Popper, maybe more people will get a chance to play with it. Okiba Gang Shinobi. Now this one is not new to Popper. It's been around. It's in the Orzhov Pestilence decks too, plus some other decks. Plane Chase Anthology goes up 36 cents this week to 166. Plane Chase 2012 up 93 cents to 308. Also important to mention that this is a Rat Ninja, two tribes that are very popular in Commander 2. Ashnod's Altar. Wow. Okay. Another very, very powerful card here. You see this quite a bit in Commander. Eternal Masters up 10 cents to 709. Antiquities up $1.64 to 1618. Potentially, this could drive some combos in Popper in the future. Mystic Remora. This used to see a lot of vintage play. Not as much anymore. Occasionally, it does show up still. This goes up 213 to 499. And again, a new card that's coming to Popper. Desert from Arabian Nights. Okay, so this is being added to Popper. It goes up $11.60 to 1492. Now, if you want a cheaper copy, you can go ahead and get the one from Time Spiral, of course. But if you want the OG one, there you go. Okay, so time for our premium spotlight. And like I say every week, I don't like to spend too much time on promo cards or foil cards because there's not enough data points online to really get great information a lot of the time. And sometimes these prices can be manipulated. But I do like to point out at least one card that feels like it's legitimate, that it is reflective of what's happening in the market. And today I thought I'd stick with the popper theme and look at the Judge Promo Merchant Scroll. This goes up 3301 this week to 49.99. Pay special attention to these foils that are going to be new to Popper, especially unique ones like this promo. They could be gaining a lot of value in the next week or two. That concludes the Market Watch for this week. Now on Monday we will do a video recapping the results of these modern tournaments that are going on this weekend. And you might want to catch that just to see which cards perform well, which cards maybe don't perform as well because I'm sure there's going to be some changes in pricing that occurs over the course of the week based on those results. Also, we're going to do a special video later in the week looking at pricing for Corset 2020 cards going into pre-release weekend. But until then, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.